welcome. We're the Hamptons. We're so delighted to have you in our home mm -hmm. to talk about our favorite topic, that is marriage. Yes. Marriage and family. Mm -hmm. I often like to quote and to say, unless the Lord build the house, yes. they labor in vain who built it. Mm -hmm. And I like to tack on another one to that, that said in Joshua, as for me mm -hmm. and my house, yes. we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. We're going to serve the Lord. Amen. And before we get into a continuation of our topic today, that is that word L-O-V-E, love, before we get into that, Jeanette, would you pray? Yes. Father, we just thank you so much for the love that you have for us. And thank you for the oneness that we have in the spirit, Lord. We thank you for this one flesh covenant that you designed for marriage and for the foundation of society, Lord. God, we thank you, Lord, that we celebrate marriage and family, your plan, God. And we pray now, Father, that all of those who tuned in, Father, that you will bless them, refresh them, give insight and wisdom, Lord. And Lord, just help us, Lord, as we navigate through the process of becoming one, because we know it is a process. Yes. We thank you that it is your sanctity of marriage and family that we honor and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Love. Yes. Let's talk about love. Yes. And I like what you said in your prayer, you know. We must be intentional mm -hmm. about our love walk. Amen. Amen. We must we must have our focus, mm -hmm. you know, on love. Mm -hmm. And we were with you before we talked about First Corinthians chapter thirteen, mm -hmm. and talked about love, and we explained to you that according to uh, chapter thirteen of First Corinthians, talking about love, uh, not having envy. Not being prideful, mm -hmm. not being puffed up, mm -hmm. seeking not our own, mm -hmm. but for the will of the other person. Mm -hmm. So that's key mm -hmm. to having a healthy home mm -hmm. is that we cultivate an atmosphere of love. Yes. And so we want to just pick pick it back on that again. I think that you uh, had something that God had given you concerning love. Yes. First of all. We said that love is an action word. To just say I love you means nothing if I don't show it by my actions in word and deed. And I think we also have to remember that as New Testament believers that the Lord said that all the Ten Commandments were summed up in loving the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mm -hmm. with all your mind, with all your soul. And loving your neighbor as yourself. All of the commandments hang on that. Mm -hmm. So I think that if we just do what Jesus told us to do, but break that down and ask ourselves, what does it mean to love you with my mind? I love you with my mind. That means I'm thinking about you. Just like the Heavenly Father, his mind is always on his children. His thoughts are continually upon us. And so, if I love you with my mind, that means that whatever I feed my mind is important. I like that. Okay? Whatever you feed will grow. So, if I'm constantly feeding my mind negativity through social media and all the comments and opinions about marriage that do not line up with God's word, that exploit that takes advantage of, that controls, mm -hmm. then if you're feeding your mind that all day long, you do not love your spouse with your mind. You don't even love God with your mind because those things are negative things from the evil one, which is Satan himself mm -hmm. because he hates marriage. You got to understand you have one enemy in marriage, and that's the devil. And he loves division. He loves strife. And he loves to divide and conquer. That's why it's so important that you and I are on one accord and that I keep my mind on you. Mm -hmm. I keep my mind on 
And over the years, you and I have found that we are so in tune that we'll be getting ready to call each other saying the same thing. And we look at each other and we nod and we kind of know what each other's thinking. Right. Why? Because we study each other yes. and we love each other with our minds. So we're not going to put a lot of garbage in our minds from the world, the culture, social media, uh, what other people's opinions are. And they're really not so good these days about the sanctity of marriage. So loving the Lord with our mind is important and loving you with my mind is important. That refers to whatever I'm thinking about. And then the scripture also says, the other part of that verse that I love that sums up all the commandments is loving the Lord with your heart. Yes. You see, the Bible tells us even about salvation that believe in your heart. Okay, so what do I believe about you, Curtis? You know, what do you believe about me? I believe in you. I think that's important to say to our spouses sometimes. I believe in you. I really do. I believe that you are who you say you are. I believe that inside of you are gifts and talents. Inside of you, there's good toward me. Even though you may not always show it, mm -hmm. but I believe that, and I'm going to always give you grace because I really believe that inside of you is a wonderful human being that God gave to me. You're my gift. I'm your gift. And that God's love says that I think no evil. Okay? God's love says that I am to esteem you. And so loving you with my heart means that I'm thinking about you. I'm thinking about how I can help you meet your goals because I believe in you. That's so important. I do. That's and so I think to love God with our heart implies what we believe about our spouses. And see, sometimes the conflicts that you're having is not the situation, the issue at hand. It's rooted in what do you believe about that person? Yes. Okay. Sometimes we marry people and we don't really believe that they um, have the ability to um, meet our needs. Then we have to examine ourselves and say, well, where are your needs coming from? What is the seat of your affection? What is it that you desire in your heart? What is it that you really desire in your heart? You have to ask those hard questions. Yes. Do you really desire someone mm. to do life with? Yes. Do you desire someone to help make their dreams come true? Do you desire someone that can uh, join with you together in prayer and the two of you all can do great things for God? Or did you really just want somebody that could help you with the bills? Okay. Or did you really want somebody that just could be a good um, housekeeper or maybe they're beautiful and could give you beautiful children? I don't know. People get married for all kinds of crazy reasons that have nothing to do with God and love. Yes. It's all about us. <laughs> and so we got to find out what we believe about each other. And I don't think we take the time. And so loving you with your heart means that I believe in my heart, Curtis, that you give your life for me. I believe in my heart that God called you and anointed you to protect and bless me, even though there's a part of me as a woman that kind of wants to go against that because, you know, we have a tendency to think that we know more than we do. And, you know, we have to realize that you know, us women sometimes, listen, watch out for the culture, ladies. That's why you got to watch what you listen to. That you are not to have anyone tell you what to do, even though you don't know what to do. Okay. Even though it's not working for you the way you've been doing life. And so you marry somebody that wants to help you change some things, but you resist the change because you really want to do it your way. And so... It goes back to what, you, what do you believe about this person? If you really don't view men uh, as having uh, uh, a place to provide a covering for you, one to whom you can submit, mm -hmm. you know, then you are not going to uh, dwell with that person and you're not going to have your heart on that person that, mm -hmm. and their, uh, their best interest at heart. Yes. Because we're talking about the heart. And so 
you got to go back and examine and view how you see and how did you see love modeled out in your home because that's going to shape your opinions. And with our soul, we're talking about loving you with our soul, loving the Lord with our soul. How do we do that? That refers, to, in my mind, to your affections. You know, mm -hmm. what, what, are the, what is the seat of your affection? Yes. What really do you desire? Yeah. What drives us. What drives us, yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that you delight in the Lord, He will give you desires of your heart. Well, let's look at where those desires are coming from. Okay? Because when those those desires that God will give us, a desire is just is, is something that's deep in your soul that money can't buy. So if all your thought thinking is about money, then you're gonna be very disappointed. You see, because you can make money with, with, with skill, with education, with tools, but if the, the desire of your heart is to get it, you'll never have enough. But if the desire of your heart is to have uh, someone that you can do life with, that will lift you up when you fall, oh, yes. like you've done so yes, many this times. Is good. Yes. <laughs> My Lord, when the money runs out, you know, you still have each other and you still are clinging together. And when life hits like COVID right now, you can come together and you have a strong foundation. And really your setbacks can become your comebacks. And it can make, it's supposed to make you stronger. You're supposed to get closer with your, with your life issues, with your life struggles, with your life crisis. It's supposed to drive you closer if the desire of your heart is in the right place to be one with this person. Because we know the Bible says if one can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. So yes. you and I together desiring the same things, which is a family legacy of children and grandchildren mm -hmm. that can pass on a blessing to the next generation of families honoring God, honoring each other, loving each other, mm -hmm. doing life together. That's what we desired in our hearts. Yes. And that is what we're seeing over time that, that you can have. And so I think it's important to look at what is it. And most of all, as I've said before, it's not about me. It's about we. It's about we. You know, going back to what you said about belief, as a man, as men, we are governed by, you know, how you make us feel, mm -hmm. okay, in terms of uh, the words that you say, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Belief. Mm -hmm. You believe in me. Mm -hmm. But also, confession, what I say. Because right. the scripture said, if you will confess with your mm -hmm. mouth and believe in your heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I must say and confess my mm -hmm. love mm -hmm. for you. It's an expression of my love. Mm -hmm. I say to you, Jenna, I love you. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate, you know, what you do around the house. Mm -hmm. But also your belief in me is going to motivate me. To sacrifice even more That's true. for you. That's right. To lay down my life mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. And to honor the vow yes. that we took at the altar mm -hmm. to love and sickness and health. Mm -hmm. Rich and poor. poor. Mm -hmm. To death do us part. Yes. And so all of these things I'm motivated to do mm -hmm. because that word, you believe yeah. in me. You yeah. believe in me. Yeah. You know, you would, you would always was my great encourager. Some days growing up mm -hmm. in early in our marriage, mm -hmm. you would, you would motivate me to go back out there mm -hmm. and do it. And it raises the level of expectation when someone believes in you. I think we've done a disservice to our children because we've lowered the standard mm -hmm. because we really didn't believe that they could reach it. So we lowered it. We've done a serious disservice to our children. The reason why they're not achieving because we've lowered the standard and that says you don't believe i can achieve mm -hmm. you don't believe i can excel mm -hmm. so i'm going to lower the standard mm -hmm. so i think that respect and belief is so important in order to achieve the goals and the vision that you have so mm -hmm. that i can you have a mission i can submit to the 
the mission, the vision that you have, because I believe that it's going to work ultimately for my good. So I don't mind coming under that mission, which means to, sub to come to submission under the mission sub, because I believe that your mission is going to work for my good. And so I submit to it. Yes. Amen. Amen. This is so good. Mm -hmm. This has blessed me. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping and praying that we know that that's going to bless you also. That this word will go out, as the word said, and not return void. We just believe by the Spirit of God that uh, things are changing in your life, changing in your marriage, changing in your relationships with your family. That that examination of the Holy Spirit yes. is doing a work mm -hmm. in our hearts, mm -hmm. your heart, right now. Amen. And we thank God once again for coming into our home, sharing with you the principles of marriage. God bless. Amen.